Okay, let's talk about five things you absolutely must know about square roots. And by the way, this also applies to a broader term called radicals, because that's what this little symbol is. But we'll kind of keep it uh, with the terminology of square roots. But five things you must know about square roots, especially if you're taking any sort of algebra course. So I'm going to do a quick review of these uh, five critical things. And uh, I believe most of you out there will probably be surprised uh, maybe about one or two of these things in this list. Hopefully you know all of this stuff, and that would be excellent. But if you have questions about square roots, definitely stick around, because this will be a good kind of little crash course on square roots and the things you need to know to be successful with uh, working with square root problems. But uh, before we get to that, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that think you're bad at math or you can't learn math. You are, you'll always, you know, never get this stuff. Listen, you can learn math, okay? Uh, besides putting effort into learning, okay? So that's the part I can't help you with. But the other part of uh, learning mathematics is great math instruction. If you don't have access to great math instruction, it's going to be difficult to learn math, and that's where I can help you out. So my instruction, I like to believe, is very clear, understandable, and most importantly, comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, even college level, check out my math help program. You can find a link to it uh, in the description of this video. It will help you out big time. Also, most of you out there will probably be taking a test with a dedicated math section. You may not even realize it. I'm talking about things like entrance exams, placement exams, certification exams, uh, SAT, ACT, Alex, AccuPlacer, maybe the ASVAB, teacher certification exam. You get the idea. I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, check out my award-winning middle and high school um, courses for homeschoolers. If you need a pair of great math notes, hopefully you do not. So you're like, no, I have my own awesome notes. That's great. But if you do not... Um, two things. One, you need to improve your notes because this is a very important skill in terms of learning math, but you can use uh, my math notes. I'm going to leave links to those in the description of this video. And don't forget to like and subscribe as this helps me out big time. Okay, so let's talk about square roots. Uh, this is going to be a quick uh, video, uh, but this is some really important stuff. So let's start off with the first thing. And this is no particular order, and I kind of uh, did some abbreviation here, is uh, the principal square root, okay, or square roots. Okay, well, let's kind of fix that up. The principal square root. So let's talk about the square root of 9. Okay, so my question to you is, what is the square root of 9? So if you said, oh, the answer is 3, that would be excellent. Okay, now I'm going to hold off any commentary here uh, for a second. Uh, now, why would you say... Um, three. Well, you would say, well, the square root is a number times itself that gets back to that number. Okay, so three times three gets me back to a positive nine. So uh, three is, in fact, the square root. But how about the square root of nine being uh, negative three? Well, is that correct? Well, let's see here. Negative three times negative three is also positive nine. Okay, so in fact, the square root of 9 is both positive and negative 3. A lot of you might uh, uh, answer that in this manner, and that's very, very good. Okay. However, you want to be familiar with this uh, concept called the principal square root, and effectively, principal square root is the positive version. Okay, The positive version when you take a square root, so the square root of 9 uh, if you answer three, well, that is correct, but that is really the principal square root. And this plays a big part, especially when you're solving radical equations, okay? You need to be aware that there is, uh, when you take the square root of a number and you're just writing that positive version, now that's called the principal square root. Whereas um, when you have both positive and negative numbers like this, uh, we're kind of like talking about roots. So there is this little technical thing. But again, if you're like, oh, I didn't even think about negative 3 being part of the answer. Well, yes, it is. Okay, just be familiar with this term, the principal square root. So the principal square root, for example, of the square root of 9 is positive 3. All right, let's move on to our next thing we want to know about uh, square roots. And that is number systems, real and complex number systems. So let's take a look at the square root of 4. So what is the answer? Well, we kind of already talked about that, plus and minus 2, right? So uh, i.e. Uh, positive 2 times positive 2 will get me back to a 4, and negative 2 times a negative 2 will also get me back to a positive 4. Of course, the principal square root would be 2. 
Well, what about this number over here, uh, the square root of negative 4? All right, what's the answer here? Well, some of you might have said, oh, isn't it negative 2 because it's a negative? No, that's wrong, okay? So you might be like, hmm, oh, yeah, that is wrong because negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. So what's the deal here? Well, to, uh, to answer this question, we need to go into the complex number system. All this stuff right here that we've been dealing with is the real number system, okay? Now, the real number system is what... Uh, you've been kind of used to, let me just kind of see if I can squeeze it in. Here's a number line, here's 0, here's 1, there's 2, there's negative 1, there's negative 2. All these positive and negative fractions, decimals, etc. on this real number line is the real number system. So we can find our answers to uh, questions like this. Uh, when we're not taking the square root of a, pos a, a negative number, your answer is going to be on the real number line, i.e. in the real number system. But this situation is completely different. When you're taking the square root of a negative number, this is what we call an imaginary number, complex number. In this case, um, the square root of negative 4 is what we call positive negative 2i. So you need to learn about imaginary numbers and complex numbers. Not that difficult, but this is typically um, introduced maybe at the second year algebra level, you know, like algebra two. You're kind of semi-introduced to this, like at the algebra one, first year algebra level. But to really work with complex numbers, which you, you absolutely will have to understand uh, if, uh, if you're going to be going on to any more advanced math, algebra two, college algebra, and beyond. Okay, But just so you're aware, when you're trying to find the square root of a negative number, that answer to that particular question is in the complex number system, not the real number system. All right, let's move on to our next thing you want to know about square roots. And there is a bunch of properties of square roots and radicals. Okay, so here's a couple of them right here. So the square root of a times b, okay, so we have a product here, the square root of a times b, is equal to the individual square root of a times the individual square root of b. So we can split up factors like this. This is really, really important. So for example, if I had the square root of 2 times 10, I could write that as the square root of 2 times the square root of 10. So you need to keep that in mind uh, in both directions. Okay, so sometimes or oftentimes you're going to uh, be looking for factors. You want to write, you want to split those factors this way. And then when you have two um square roots being multiplied like this, you can also go in this manner. The key here is that they both have to be square roots. For example, if I had the square root of A and the square root of B, you can't have, well, let me, let's me let kind of uh, talk about uh, this problem right here. It's square root of 2 times the square root of 10. What if I had the cube root of 2 times the square root of 10? Well, this is a cube root, this is a square root, so this is not equal. This property is only equal when you're dealing with the same root. So if I had the cube root of, of 2 times the cube root of 10, that's equal to the cube root of 2 times 10. Okay, so that's why I have uh, here um, at this particular uh, property. So everything I'm talking about, uh, with the exception of the principal square root, um, is in, falls into a larger category of what we call radicals. Okay, so if you're taking an Algebra 1 course or any sort of Algebra course, you're going to be uh, learning about radicals, um, which square roots are kind of a part of. But let's take a look at another property that's very similar to this that you need to be uh, familiar with. So if you have a fraction, the square root of a fraction like this, the square root of a over b, is equal to that individual square root of the uh, numerator over the individual square root of the denominator. And there's other properties as well, but these are like real big ones, okay, uh, that come into play. And I'm not even kind of going into the concepts of how to add and subtract um, uh, square roots, all right? That kind of all falls under what I would classify as like properties of square roots and radicals. Okay, let's go on to our fourth thing here, and that's perfect squares, okay? Perfect squares are, uh, you can just kind of look at them, and you're like, oh, yeah, these are nice numbers, because each one of these numbers here, I can find a lovely square root of, so like 4 is a perfect square, that's 2 times 2, or the square root of 4 is 2, okay? Or the square root of 9, perfect square, or the um, principal uh, square root is 3. Okay, we love these numbers, these perfect squares, like 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared. You want to be on the lookout for these, okay? So perfect squares are huge when you're dealing with square roots, and I'm going to show you an example why. So let's take a look at this problem. 
the square root of 20. So remember, we can break up uh, the square root of 20 in terms of factors. I'm like, okay, the square root of 20, uh, 20 is the same thing as 4 times 5. It's also the same thing as 2 times uh, 10. But the deal is when you're looking at a square root, you always want to be on the lookout for uh, these as possible factors of this number. So look at this number and think to yourself, can I um, have a perfect uh, perfect square factor in here, okay? In other words, is this like 4 times something or 9 times something or 16 times something? I'm like, oh, 4 is a perfect square factor, so 4 times 5. And I'm going to show you want, why you want to uh, keep these in mind. So 20, again, is the square root of that perfect square factor 4 times 5. Now I can split this. Remember, I just showed you that property. I could split this one big square root into two individual little square roots. So I'm splitting the factor, so I have a square root of 4 times the square root of 5, and the square root of 4, of course, is 2. So the square root of 20 is simplified as 2. The square root of 4, of course, is 2 times that square root of 5 to square root of 5. So this is absolutely something you need to know how to do, is simplify radicals, simplify square roots, and you do that by uh, knowing about perfect squares and these uh, properties of uh, square roots and radicals. Okay, let's go ahead and finish up with this last thing that you absolutely need to know about square roots. And that is a square root in the denominator. So I have two examples here. So let's take a look at 7 over the square root of 4. Well, if I want to um, kind of uh, simplify this, you never want to leave a square root in the denominator. So that's the main thing you want to know. It's a really kind of a no-no. You don't want to have a square root in the denominator of a fraction. Okay. Now here, uh, 7 over the square root of 4, if I can take the square root, it's a perfect square factor, just simplify that, that ought to be 7 over 2. Okay, just don't leave that square root in there, go ahead and simplify, fully simplify until you are done. Okay, the real problem that arises is when you have an irrational number in the denominator. Okay, so for example, the square root of 4 is, of course, 2. But the square root of 3, okay, if you try to go into your calculator, you're going to get some decimal, okay, and that decimal is what we call non-repeating and non-terminating. It basically goes to infinity. We don't know the, the, all the digits to this answer, so it's what we call an irrational number. It's a number that cannot be expressed as a fraction, but basically we don't want to divide by an irrational number. We want to divide by a number that we don't know of. To get this number, we literally have to go out to infinity, which is a pretty... Uh, uh, long time, okay, certainly more <laughs> time than I have, uh, it would take forever and ever to write this whole number out, and then we would divide by this number that we can't get. So you don't want to divide by an irrational number. So the square root of 3, okay, is what we call an irrational number. Hopefully you're familiar with these terms, this basic algebra concepts. Okay, so in that case, we need to fix this so we don't have an uh, irrational number in the denominator, and that's called rationalizing the denominator. So to fix this up, uh, the main idea here is we're going to multiply this square root of 3 by another square root of 3, but if I multiply uh, the denominator by square root of 3, I also have to multiply the numerator by the square root of 3. Let me fix that 3 up a little bit more. Okay, there we go. All right, so this is what uh, the main idea behind rationalizing. So let's start with the numerator. So 7 times the square root of 3, we can just simply write this way, 7 times the square root of 3. And then the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, remember, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the same thing as one big square root of 3 times 3, which, of course, is the square root of 9, which, of course, the square root of 9 is 3. So now we have a lovely 3 down there in the denominator. I'm perfectly okay with an irrational number in the numerator. Okay, that's not an issue. It's the denominator. So if you leave your answer like this, you will get points, many points taken off by your math teacher. I'm sure of it. So they're expecting you to what we call rationalize the denominator to rewrite your problem this way. Okay, so these are five huge things that you want to know about square roots. Of course, there's other things and whatnot, but if you get these main ideas down, they're really going to be in good shape in your uh, respective math classes. You definitely got to know how to work with radicals and square roots. But again, you know, the only way you're going to truly master this is by practicing, okay, by doing problems. Remember, you just can't learn math by watching someone else do it, okay? So a couple suggestions. One, 
uh, in terms of square roots of my math courses, I choose some uh, thoroughly and uh, uh, pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two, whatever respective courses. If you're getting into complex numbers, you might want to check out like my algebra two course, uh, college algebra course. If you're at the uh, pre-calculus level, you can check that out as well. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.